Hi, I'm Bernie Sanders. I'm running for president. It is not only about winning the Democratic nomination and the general election. Our campaign is about transforming our country and creating a government based on the principles of economic, social, racial, and environmental justice. And now there are 10. This morning, Senator Bernie Sanders formally entered the already crowded race for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination. That's a very different race than the one he faced in 2016 oh, against Hillary Clinton. This time he's battling a large and diverse field that's expected to get even larger. And so far, it includes five women. Joining us now, live NBC News correspondent and host of MSNBC's KCDC, Casey Hunt, who covered the Sanders campaign back in 2016. Also Washington Post political reporter, Eugene Scott. Casey, you're in Manchester, New Hampshire, where you spoke with one of his Democratic rivals, Kamala Harris, who this was the first time we saw her create real distance when she said, Democratic Socialist, that's not me. She did indeed, and that, of course, uh, even more relevant because of Bernie Sanders' entry into this race. And quite frankly, uh, the president and his uh, campaign, his campaign in waiting, uh, focusing on this idea of Democrats as socialists. You heard it in the State of the Union. And Bernie Sanders, still not a Democrat, despite, uh, of course, running this now a second time for the Democratic uh, presidential nomination. And Kamala Harris was very clear with reporters when she was campaigning here in New Hampshire that she does not identify as a democratic socialist. So I tried to push her a little bit on what exactly that means, how she defines democratic socialist, what's different about where she stands than where the Democratic Party is. Take a look at how she answered. Bernie Sanders jumped into the presidential race today. You said that you are not a democratic socialist. I am not. What's the difference between a Democrat and a democratic socialist in your mind? Well, I can talk about who I am. <laughs> I believe that um, we have got to have a system that recognizes that it has not been working for everyone equally. So I, I support capitalism. It, 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 in theory, is something that requires competition that will allow us to be better and, 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 and evolve. So I thought it was interesting that she, uh, right out of the gate, said, I can talk about who I am. I mean, one thing that uh, seems very true about the Harris campaign, listening to her out here on the trail, is that her biography and background is clearly going to be very important. And I think you've seen that uh, a lot of Democratic voters are interested. That they're looking for a candidate who is a woman, a person of color, who adds some diversity. That, that seems to be a very important thing uh, for them as they consider who uh, should be on the ticket uh, in 2020. Obviously, Bernie Sanders... Uh, makes, in a lot of ways, the opposite argument. He talks about how uh, it should simply be a contest of ideas. He doesn't want to talk necessarily about who he is uh, when he's making these arguments. He just wants to talk about what is the policy uh, position. And, you know, quite frankly, that rubbed uh, some people the wrong way. I know you, you guys also want to chat a little bit about uh, African Americans mm -hmm. and whether or not they'd be willing to support Bernie Sanders. And, I, you know, I think that the way that Kamala Harris answered that question, I mean, first of all, it shows you how difficult it is to pull these policies pieces apart. I mean, this is really a conversation about labels mm -hmm. uh, in many ways. You know, I asked her about Medicare for all. She said, well, that's not a socialist idea. Um, you know, obviously that's, you know, something that came originally uh, from Bernie Sanders. Uh, but she did, again, focus on that identity question first. Allie. Uh, Eugene, to, to Casey's question about um, what uh, not just Democrats at large have to choose from, but, but African-American Democrats, in the last uh, Democratic primary. You had uh, Hillary Clinton sort of hoping that uh, that Bill Clinton's popularity amongst African Americans was going to translate to her, and you had Bernie Sanders sort of facing some accusations that uh, he didn't have enough outreach on that front. In this uh, field of Democratic candidates so far, um, African Americans have more options. They absolutely do, uh, and they have uh, more options even beyond uh, just African-American candidates, just other candidates of color. Yep. And so if uh, Bernie Sanders is going to uh, be effective and be successful uh, with black voters more so than he was in 2016, he's going to have to compete against uh, some of these candidates who, quite frankly, are more fluent in talking to uh, voters of color about the issues impacting them very specifically. Obviously, Bernie Sanders has uh, wider name recognition than Kamala Harris, 
But when you look at some of the base uh, voters of color, uh, they are very much more in line with Kamala Harris and familiar with her and just interested in her uh, compared to Bernie Sanders, in part because of some uh, concerns in his 2016 presidential campaign about having largely an all-white male leadership team, black staffers really not feeling like they were heard and valued, um, just some other issues related to outreach to historically black colleges and other black groups. So Sanders is going to have to do something very differently than he did in 2016, in addition to getting ahead of all of these uh, diverse candidates that represent what the Democratic Party said they want to do moving into 2020. Casey, you talked about it earlier with me today, the, the rock star-like environment around Bernie's campaign in 2016. He had a lot of ideas that were very progressive that people were excited about. But even last night, we heard from Amy Klobuchar, and it wasn't to many people clapping, that a lot of the progressive ideas are aspirational, but they're tough to pay for, whether it's Medicare for all or four-year colleges being free. Will Bernie Sanders be held to a higher standard this time? Lots of great ideas, but sir, how are you going to pay for them? You know, he was actually, we tried to hold him to that standard in 2016, and this was something that, if you've ever watched, you know, interviews with Bernie Sanders, uh, he, there are things that get under his skin, and he sometimes, you know, kind of balks at a question, and this was one area where it was never really clear what the answer was, and there was a lot of irritation uh, that was often flashed when you did press him on this question of, okay, this all sounds great, uh, you're making these promises, but at the end of the day where the rubber meets the road, how are you actually going to get it done? And, you know, one interesting thing that's a little different about this primary is that there are actually some people who are coming out, you know, Elizabeth Warren has proposed a tax on the wealthy that has, you know, X number of dollars that could be used to pay for programs like this. I mean, she is, you know, putting out there how she would pay for it. Bernie Sanders' team did put out, you know, kind of a, an outline of how they would do it, uh, but there were a lot of questions and it really wasn't clear that any of the math added up. So, yeah, I do think that it's going to be a, a real potential problem for him. I think, you know, the challenge is, and, and one thing I'm curious about how this is going to play out after four years of, you know, Donald Trump saying that the world is one way when, you know, your eyes maybe tell you that it's not that way. Are voters still looking for people to tell them that, uh, you know, something will happen even if there's not a realistic way to explain it. You know, I mean, yeah. Donald Trump went to Pittsburgh and said, I'm going to bring the coal jobs back. Obviously, that was never really going to happen. But when Hillary Clinton went there and said, it's never yes. really going to happen, you know, that did not go did over not well. That. So That's right. we'll see if Klobuchar can deliver that message in a different way. Uh, okay, so we've talked about Klobuchar, uh, Eugene. We've talked about Bernie Sanders. We've talked about Kamala Harris. Uh, that's still uh, seven more six more, seven more candidates uh, in the uh, potential candidates. And we haven't talked about, obviously, Joe Biden or Beto O'Rourke or others who may get into the race. Uh, what's your sense of, uh, of the competition between the established big candidates like Bernie Sanders, by the way, who's got a big money advantage over everyone, and others who say, come on, listen to me. This is the option to, to listen to me and, and, and get some change. I think some of the early polling we've seen here, the Washington Post says most Democrats want to get behind someone who can win. And so that person who can win obviously means someone who can beat Trump, but also someone who can win the support of some of the Democratic Party's most loyal uh, voting blocs, including people of color and women. And for that person to win, we do believe that for the most part, they will have to be a bit more pragmatic and reach out to independent voters who uh, perhaps stayed out in 2016 or even voted for Trump. But they can do that while risking black voters and women voters and people on the coast. And so it'll be interesting, interesting to see which candidates will be able to do that and bring both of these wings of the Democratic Party together to be effective. Uh, both of you, thank you for joining us. Casey Hunt and Eugene Scott of the Washington Post. I, I think it... No, please. It's funny that when, when Casey said together. that, 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 that Bernie Sanders would get a bit chafed when, uh, when she said, well, how would you pay for it? And you yeah. know what it makes me think of? President Trump on the campaign trail saying in the state of Ohio... Don't sell your houses. There's no plants going to be closed. And then what did people learn in the last year? That the president doesn't have control mm -hmm. over corporations. And if they decide they're going to close a plant, they're going to close a plant. He can't reverse what he did for, for those corporations on the tax cut. So I, I would say this. I, I certainly don't want to encourage uh, the lack of specificity that candidates have when they introduce things. And Bernie Sanders, when he brought in Medicare for All, said, I'm not going to have a price for it. We'll let others figure that out. 
I will say, as a strong advocate of universal health care, which every other country in the OECD does except the United States, and every other country does it at a fraction of the cost, it actually doesn't matter what your proposals are. They're going to be better than what we already have. But how do you suggest these massive plans that cost a whole lot of money without having to also say, but it will raise your taxes? Right. How can we ask for more and well, be unwilling to have our so taxes in the case raised? of in the case of health care, if it raises your taxes, but it takes away all all the other ancillary costs, the ones that your employers pay, the co-pays that you pay, all the other stuff, then maybe there's a net benefit. But you do have to go to some pains to explain it. But that's right? exactly my point. You have to go through pains to explain it. And what we learned in the last two years, which is going to be hard for anyone running for president, that people want to hear three words, slogans, and just say, I'm going to yep. rip this up, I'm going to fix right. it. Right, and I'm Medicare for all, or single-payer health care, or call these are not three-word slogans. And that's, that's the it's danger. complicated. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.